Welcome to another insightful episode of Me and My Health Up with your host, Anthony Harcher, a healthy man, according to his kids, aka clinical nutritionist and lifestyle medicine specialist. The purpose of this podcast is to enhance and enlighten your well-being. And today we'll be chatting with hair specialist Shauna Casey and Danielle O'Carroll on hair loss. So you may be thinking, why hair loss on a health podcast? Well, let me share with you why. It's not self-service because I've lost all my hair. It may be that I don't want you to lose all your hair. Or simply that hair plays an important role in our looks, detoxification, scalp protection. Whatever it is, it is for you or someone you know. Enough of this justification. Let's get on with the show because... I know Shauna and Danielle will entertain you with their passion for your hair. Welcome, Shauna. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for uh, so, having us. <laughs> you're welcome. I don't know a lot about these two except they're um, hairdressers or uh, previously hairdressers are uh, now in a different space of uh, holistic hair care. Uh, I do know they're Irish, uh, so um, it will be fun uh, just because the <laughs> Irish are fun, provided I've got the Irish part right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we, we may need subtitles at times, but uh, it, it should be <laughs> it should be good to go. So let's uh, let's get uh, Shauna and Danielle to uh, share why they're doing what they're doing today. Um, yeah, thanks a million for having us on. We feel um, very privileged to be able to speak on your podcast today. Um, and just in time for St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. <laughs> um, so um, I'll say a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Shauna Casey and um, I'm a hairdresser. I trained in Ireland in 2007. I'd done my training course in college in Waterford City um, in Ireland. And um, I... I came out to Australia uh, over uh, 11 years ago now, and um, I just found that within the hair industry that um, we weren't doing enough um, in the hair salons um, for our hair loss clients. Um, me, myself, I um, have polycystic ovaries, which one of the um, side effects or um, conditions or symptoms of that um, can be um, getting fine, thin hair. And I was always looking for more volume with my hair. So I was always searching the market for either products or extensions, you know, for my own um, insecurities really around my hair. And um, then I was looking over at Europe and Ireland and the UK on what they were doing for hair loss clients within the hair industry. And they just seemed to be um, much further ahead um, on looking after hair loss clients. And then I ended up finding a company in Denmark um, where we have products now um, here where we educate other hairdressers um, on how to make um, safe spaces first of all in the hair industry or in the hair salons and be able to give more services um, for our hair loss clients um, and then I'll let Danielle introduce herself so I'm Danielle O'Carroll and it's a similar background to Shauna um, in hairdressing for over um, 16 years now. I trained in Ireland and came to Australia in 2008. Um, again, I found that there was no solutions in the salon. Um, I felt really stuck at times and I don't do anything unless I believe in it. So I'm not going to recommend something unless I know it has results. I am very holistic in my approach to things and Sean and I both work the company that way. We're really holistic and I too have polycystic ovaries, but I have too much hair. So I actually have the reverse problem to Sean. So it's interesting that we can both come together and approach this the way that we like to approach things, the way we've done things ourselves. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got into this and Sean founded it two and a half years ago and brought me into the company last year and I've been loving it's just so rewarding to actually change someone's life through hair and that's literally what we're doing I love the hairdressing aspect of it but this is extremely rewarding yeah I can imagine uh yeah just from that uh people get very self-conscious when they start to lose hair and I think what I've really 
connected with in terms of what you guys do is how you mentioned the word holistic and very much I'm a holistic practitioner. And so would really like you to share with the listeners as to how you take that holistic approach around hair, hair loss and hair care. So basically what we always say is mind, body, hair connection. And we feel like in the salon that we can be first point of call where we spot things. Um, And, you know, like main causes of hair loss can be stress. And we know with stress related, it can be reversed. Um, It can be hormone imbalance. Um, It can be, um, you know, it can be just a multiple uh, um, of things where we can take a holistic approach to it in the sense of, um, you know, our food, like um, people become allergic to things like dairy. A lot of the time we look at where, you know, um, we've seen studies before where um, dairy was cut out of um, a child's diet and hair started growing back. So that's really important to us when we can actually simplify it down where someone doesn't need to be taking um, as much medication and we're are, are doing a combination of both, but looking at the, the mind and the body aspect of what's going on with our hair, because it has um, a massive connection as a whole. And, you know, this is why I, I trained as a hypnotherapist. I've, um, you know, just constantly educated myself more on how the mind works and um, and how that can have such a, a massive effect on on our hair. And um, yeah, we've just been introducing that um, into the into the hair salons as well on um, how we can reduce stress, like meditations and food, and just taking um, an easier, more holistic approach to getting healthy hair, really. Hairdressers to train themselves in Reiki. Like Sean and I are both trained, and having that awareness when you are behind someone that is going through a lot um, to protect yourself and protect your client. So that's another approach that we like to use with this as well. Yeah, so I've actually never interviewed a Reiki practitioner, and you're both Reiki practitioners. So that's a a really good subject to uh, touch on at this point and you know to explain to the uh, listeners what is reiki how it works so reiki is energy work so we're all we are all made up of energy everything is energy and um within our bodies we get blocks and we've got chakras in our bodies and and we can transfer energy between each other and um when we're in the hair salon with somebody for such a long period of time you know if somebody's got like a really low level of energy or they've got a lot of blocks in their system you know it could be from traumas it can be from it can be from a multiple of things um and it's just protecting your own energy or being able to um you know give energy work to your um your clients as well to help with those blocks which you know overall then will make you feel healthier not just with your hair you know with your skin your energy levels will be better um so that's what we want to like make sure that we're teaching our hairdressers that they know that we're we're, we are giving our energy as well we can be so drained sometimes like not just from physically working but people taking our energy from us um during the day so that's why we trained in in Reiki we really believe like I um, get um, energy work done all the time and it it, you know it just really does work yeah because I can imagine as a hairdresser you you hear a lot of issues right that people are experiencing uh, and they share those issues and and hence why you need to protect yourself from taking on too much of that energy because it would obviously affect your energy as a result of that so how does Reiki actually work in this energetic space? I, I, I'm intrigued. Um, so with, um, with Reiki, it's been around for thousands of years in the sense of, you know, I feel like we oversee the transfer of energy. And, you know, a lot of people will think or people that don't understand it will think it's woo-woo in a sense. But if you start working on your own, um, on your own self, you've got to first heal your own self. Um, and 
work through your own blockages. I actually um, started my journey with energy work in um, the transformation from within in Marubra. Um, it was a lady called Aleki where um, she started um, working on some blockages, energy blockages that I had and started working on my chakras. And, you know, there's seven chakras it goes up to 12 and if they get blocked so like you know say you've got a heart your heart chakra and if your heart chakra is blocked and just releasing the the blocked energy around that when you train as a practitioner you can help your client to work through their blockages and from that then they start getting results so it's a transfer of energy and this it doesn't require touch right it it's done at a distance is that right you can do both it just depends but you can do distance um reiki once your client is in agreement of that you can do distance reiki or you can do um you can do whatever um with touch as well so with respect to distance i, I was thinking of it, it's the hand not actually touching the skin or were you thinking of the telehealth sort of reiki um so you could do both. So I, I just saying for in the salon, when it comes to hand touching, like at the head massage basin, that's your best place to really connect with your client in terms of doing Reiki. You're given, they're giving you at least 15 minutes and they're very happy to have their head massage 90% of the time. So in terms of if people are uncomfortable with touching you, that can be your opening to starting them on their journey. And then you can continue to do it in the chair with or without touch but making, always making sure that they're aware of what's happening, um, never doing it under without any consent. And uh, that uh, head, when you're working on the head, I sh assume that's a head chakra, right? Um, a crown. A crown, is it? And yeah. uh, what, what implicates that? So, you know, what could cause a blockage in the crown chakra? Well, the, the crown in particular, the crown and the heart, you'll see we are normally always in our head because we're thinking all the time so you know you can see we're like you know we've we're just in such a fast pace of life especially in Sydney here you know it's such a fast pace of life and there's so much demanded from us now whether it's from you know kids or work or whatever it may be so you can imagine um how much pressure we put on our brains and our crown chakra that you know and just releasing some energy around there um, can just overall de-stress you. And the same with the heart chakra, you know, it's such a powerful, like our hearts are such a powerful thing. It's like our second brain. And, um, you know, it's when our chakras do get blocked, it shows up in our life in, um, in different ways. Um, you know, it's different for everyone. So, you know, just working on your overall energy has a major um, effect on your hair. And, and like that, like we say, our, your mind, body, hair connection, you know, it's, um, it's huge, you know. And what have you seen in your time of, you know, supporting clients holistically? So in terms of, you know, have you got a client success story to share? As in, in, in what sense like that has been having say energy work or, cause we do just such a multitude of things. So I'm just with energy work in particular. Uh, yeah, it, 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 we'll start with energy and then we'll just talk about some other um, integrative care where you've done energy plus products, you know, plus uh, other stress management techniques or, yeah, just uh, yeah, just share a, a client. You know, it could be personal or it could be yeah, a client that's, uh, that's had great success through this holistic approach that you take. So basically, the first thing that we find really important at the moment is um, appearance recovery, like our hair has become so important to us. And um, we find with the, the hair that we can give back to our clients and the appearance recovery um, can give back confidence. Um, it can give people back. It can really change somebody's life where, um, you know, by giving them the confidence, they can go out and live a normal life which overall will have a massive effect on their body. So it will de-stress them from stressing out over their hair. 
And what we've seen is when you can de-stress somebody by just giving them hair initially for the appearance recovery, um, it, it de-stresses them, which has a knock-on effect, like a ripple effect for everything else. Um, we've got like so many stories mm. when it, in the sense of, I'll leave you. We've got one lady that um, in particular that, I mean, not none of her family even know she has hair loss, mm. but we've created a custom-made piece for her um, so that she doesn't have, again, this is appearance recovery. This isn't um, mainly energy work. It is mainly the hair. But just in terms, like she flew from Perth um, to Sydney and back just to get this hair piece because she can't get it anywhere else. And this has changed her life because she can swim with this piece on. She never has to take it off. That was a big thing for her. So these are small things, but that swim is your daily routine. That's your cup of coffee. Like that's something she needs every day. So we've given her the ability to swim every day without taking her hair piece off. Because when she took it off, she, she was reminded every time that she's got hair loss. So to be able to have that, like that was really touching for her um, in terms of appearance recovery. Mm -hmm. And as well as that is like, even if we weren't giving somebody hair, it's um, creating that safe space for clients to come into the salon. So, you know, we've got another um, young girl that has had um, alopecia since she was a child and um, she has some hair left. But, you know, we said to her, why don't you leave that grow? And that's not for everyone. We were like, maybe you can have some color services done. And we just gave her some funky colors and, you know, just having fun, like actually letting her come in. Like, but that's what we say, whether you've got hair or you don't have hair, um, coming in and having these services can make you feel so much better in the hair salon. So, you know, even if you don't have hair, come in and be able to still get your head washed. And, um, you know, that's, Honestly, that's the one thing that all our clients were always saying to us, this is my favorite part. You know, it's their favorite part, bringing them to the break and um, to the basin and getting them to sit there and take 10 or 15 minutes. And I know it might not sound like a lot of time, but honestly, people don't give themselves 10 or 15 minutes to just relax and let somebody, you know, massage them or, you know, give them some energy work. And, and that in itself, um, can be life-changing for clients so like what we want is because there's not enough of um myself and danielle to go around what we've done is we educate other hairdressers and hair salons um to a very high standard of creating safe spaces within the salon so that um, the, the clients will feel comfortable to be able to go in to the hairdresser and approach them with their concerns about their hair or you know, like we are hair therapists at the end of the day. Um, people have been calling us uh, um, therapists for many years, but we genuinely are. So even if it's just to come in and have a chat with the hairdressers and um, like that can just be enough sometimes for some of the clients. Um, like Danielle was saying, you know, some of them, some of the clients that we've had um, don't feel comfortable taking um, or taking a hat off in front of their husband or um, their wife or kids or and we're there to support them if they want to just come and have a chat you know and um, we've done we had another lady that gave us a testimonial not that long ago where um, she wasn't even in the same state and we just got on a zoom call with her and um, you know she just cried the whole way through the consultation but she said it was the first time she's in her 50s. It was the first time that she'd actually spoke to anybody about her hair loss. And it had been going on for years, you know, and that's just very touching to us that people are reaching out to us for their help and that we can train other hairdressers so that, you know, we can have these clients um, just feeling safe that they can come to us for our help. Recently, I had one um, in one of our salons come in and she wasn't ready to have a hair piece yet I think it was her first time ever speaking like that like the zoom call to anyone and she physically came in with someone um but even opening that conversation for her like she wasn't ready to have a hair piece um I don't even think she was really ready to talk about it much but the fact that she knows she can go back there again she's already been there once it's just opening opportunities and they don't feel so alone and that's really what our aim is, is to have safe spaces for anybody with any type of hair loss. 
That's fantastic. And I really like this term safe space. And I, I guess my next question is going to be in relation to how you create that safe space, because it's, you know, really effective in terms of how you connect with your client and help them at that deeper level and really um, support that energy healing, so to speak, uh, because you get them to come out with the problem and you start working with the problem as opposed to suppressing it and therefore, you know, suppressing our energy. So I'm really keen to uh, find out because, I mean, this is not only in the context of hair loss, this is, you know, with mental health is so important that we're able to create safe spaces. So um, please share how you um, generate that safe space in practices and how you educate other hairdressers to create that safe space. Well, first of all, we don't give our products to anybody unless they're educated first. So that's keeping a high standard. And we also pick the salons that we want to have the product in. And so our, our hair pieces in. But what we do is in level one and level two of our education, we make sure, first of all, from from having those meetings before they do our education, you know, we need to make sure that they're in alignment with our core values in the company. And our core values, number one is the client experience. I said, you know, there's no point in having anything there to give to the client if they don't feel welcome when they come. So, you know, it, it might seem like common sense, but, you know, we've all um, encountered bad customer service before and we want to make sure that the hairdressers really want to be passionate about listening to what's going on with the client so you know training the hairdressers on um you know if you do have a really busy salon then maybe you need to open it and open your salon on a different day to give privacy so maybe it's before hours or after hours or on days that they're closed you need to have certain times so that's one way of creating a safe space where client doesn't feel like they're going to have to walk into a really busy salon and talk in front of you know 10 other people you know because when we talk about hair loss we don't talk about just um say alopecia you know and we do a cancer care um program as well and it's like you know being making sure that we've got our um hairstylists or hairdressers equipped with as much as as much knowledge as they can but not putting the your problems onto the client you know um, letting the client come in and talk and you know expressing whatever they need to express without having any judgment no matter what it is and um you know there's there's just so much in our education where it all comes back to then it being a safe space. You know, it's all those tiny little elements um, of giving the privacy and being a good listener and, um, you know, referring your client out if you can't do anything. You know, we've got referral partners and, you know, when we pick a referral partner, um, we scrutinize them too. Like we've had many meetings with a referral partner before, you know, we work with um, functional medicine practitioners, trichologists, and, you know, picking holistic people that if we don't have the answers, working with experts in the field, being like, okay, well, we've created a safe space in the salon and we won't have the answer because, you know, we don't have the answer for everything, but you know, we also work alongside these people that, you know, they might be able to help and passing them into the right hands of people that are in alignment with what we do, you know, so that's how we're creating the safe spaces in the salon. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. Yeah, you know, there's, there is so much more and I could probably talk all day, but it does seem very simple what I've said, but that's the key factor of, you know, not feeling like your client is an annoyance or just someone that you're going to force a product down their throat. That's not what it's about. We genuinely, like I said, want to make sure that the whole client experience, even if the client walks out and you couldn't give them anything that day, you can just create that safe space for 10, 20, 30 minutes for them to come in and express themselves. That will have a massive part to play in their journey. Um, of their hair loss. I'll give you one example of a child um, of creating a safe space. Um, we had, you know, a really traumatized 14-year-old um, going through hair loss and um, she was after getting a scissors and like just cutting massive chunks out of her hair. And, you know, she'd been actually, so I was after giving the parents, I'd had um, 
meetings with the parents and her and and she used to be like ringing me or texting me at like 12 o'clock on Saturday nights and you know all of a sudden she'd like got to the stage of where like she just wanted to shave her head and you know shaving somebody's head can be quite traumatic so um uh, I went and I picked her up because she had reached out to me for my help I checked in with her parents you know was it okay you know to maybe shave her head that day I don't, I don't like going against what the parents don't want but I I brought her in and um you know taking a razor and just turning that on um, she started freaking out looking in the mirror she started freaking out because she was wearing a hat and we had to take her hat off and she started freaking out so like I covered the mirror you know and um, just watching your client and making sure that you're you know assessing the situation because every client is different I covered the mirror she didn't want to look at herself I um, when I turned on the razor she started freaking out you know, when I had removed her hat, like she butchered her hair so much that it was it was gone beyond saving anyway. And I was just asking her like how she felt when she'd done that. And, uh, you know, like just wanting to know more about it. She couldn't remember it. She said she felt numb. You know, that to me, like she was like gone into state of shock. That was trauma. She couldn't remember. Like that was just mind blowing for me that you know her hair was after doing this to her and um you know but she wanted it gone you know and, and that was going to give her a release and um but it was listening to what she needed so she didn't want to hear the razor so we said we turn on some music she got to pick the music that she wanted so we blasted rihanna through the roof you know so that she couldn't hear the razor and um, we shaved her head and honestly I could feel that energy lifting and she felt so much lighter after we just took her hair off and she wanted to look at herself in the mirror and you know follow up from that like her dad met up with me and he cried and he was just like she's just had a new lease of life she has gone into getting an apprenticeship and She's getting out of the house like she sits and plays with weeks now. And, you know, that's what creating a safe space is, is, you know, knowing that the client isn't a hindrance to you. Like for me, I get as much out of that as the client is getting out of that. And us as a company training other hairdressers, we want to make sure that, you know, they're getting as much out of it as the client is, that it's not a one way transfer of energy that that success story of her now having a new lease of life and really owning her alopecia um, is really important to us on why we create these safe spaces i totally agree uh, shona it's uh it's very much what we don't have enough of in this world is you know people's ears and people actually uh giving you their attention like so as much as i you know i agree with you it's very simple but it's not happening so it's so important that you share this education that you know if you really want to connect with that person and and, and allow that person to open up so you can better understand what's going on in their life is just you know spending time with them sitting with them and and, and allowing the silence to be silent and eventually um, you know, when they're ready, they'll come out with it. It's, it's, I think it's often, you know, when you're sitting down, you're looking at the watch, looking, picking up the phone, that person perceives, oh, you're too busy to hear what's really going on mm -hmm. in my life. And, uh, and hence, they don't share. Whereas, you know, what you did uh, for this 14 year old girl was actually slow down, slow her down, and address all her um, fears and phobias and take that away, remove that. And it was like, un, you know, unpeeling the onion, you know, first of all, you, you know, you gave her a safe space through, you know, slowing down and really just connecting with her. And then, you know, there was all these layers of, you know, she couldn't look at the mi mirror, uh, the, the sound of the clippers and you just remove those, lay all those barriers essentially and, mm -hmm. and allowed to that deeper connection. And, um, Hence, you know, as you said, it's uh, given her a new lease of life and, you know, it sounded like a real turning point for her. So, uh, yeah, I, I really um, commend you uh, for taking, you know, this approach with your clients because I, I think, you know, with this busy world we live in, there's just not enough of this space where it's you go in and it feels peaceful and um, 
uh, just conducive to wanting to open up. Uh, as you said, you know, you walk into a busy hairdresser, you just think, oh, you know, if I start talking to them, I'm going to hold up the next appointment and, you know, they'll be late and, you know, and they're just chopping away. And whereas, you know, if you create that space for the client by having a longer appointment with them, uh, you know, less people in the salon, so they feel an element of privacy, then that allows them to really open up and allows you to do your holistic work. Otherwise, you, you would struggle to get to the root cause of what's driving that, um, you know, lack of positive self-image or self-esteem. And, and you know, you're able to get to that uh, through your work of, you know, taking the time and addressing it holistically. Mm. And like, you know, I suppose we just look at it like everyone's got this inner child. So it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, a 14 year old or, you know, a 30, 40, 50 year old man. Everyone has this like inner child that we all crave that nurturing. And, you know, it's, it's just about like that, creating that safe space so that you will listen and you can nurture the person. And it's just about nurturing the soul. And it doesn't matter yeah, like what age or, you know, it just doesn't matter anything. It's just about being there to listen and nurture. And, you know, it's like um, other things that are really important is touch. Like touch for us is like really important. And that's what we do as hairdressers. It's, you know, we're in the industry of touch. Like some people don't ever get like won't, won't have say got touched in maybe a long time. And, and that touch contact at the base and with the permission of your client, you know, can be really rewarding for your client. So. Um, yeah, we feel very privileged in in being able to share what we do with others, you know, so that we can create these safe spaces and offer clients more. Yeah, I think it's great. And you raise, you know, two really good points there is that element of touch, which has been lost through COVID. And I'm thinking, yeah. you know, that earlier point around stress, you know, in, you know, as a causation of hair loss, uh, that's also exacerbated because of COVID. So I, I'm, I'm seeing that hairdressing and people taking the time for that self-care and seeing the hairdresser in this salon that, you know, you've trained and, um, you know, really skilled them up in terms of how to create that safe space for that client. I can see that really resonating at this point in time because of what's going on. Mm. And you know what, as hairdressers, um, we become very close with our clients. You know, you'll see clients that will be coming back to you year after year after year. Like you might actually see your clients more than you actually see family members, you know, and you gain this like trust and communication that they would share more with you than they do with anyone else, you know, and um, it's it's just really important for us now at this day and age, um, and especially out the back of COVID, that we've got more salons like this, you know. I agree. And that you, you mentioned the word hair, hair therapist, and that's truly what you are, a hair mm -hmm. therapist. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so um, just on, you know, like, I guess, sort of closing remarks, I'm really keen to uh, get the top tips for preventing hair loss, because a lot of us like to, you know, think, well, if we're holistic thinkers, we like to think, how can we prevent such things happening? Uh, what, what are your top tips to uh, prevent hair loss? So preventing hair loss and, um, you know, like de-stressing, but it's very easy to just recommend to de-stress to somebody. But, you know, self-love and self-care. So like even just meditating for five or 10 minutes every day, if it's not every day, once a week, like find somewhere in your in your week where you just get into this rhythm, like download an app and just give yourself more self-love. Um, you know, like we do look at it as a whole, like eating better, exercising is so good for the mind that can help in its end, in itself um, and and like that um if it's a case that you're you're really struggling like looking us up online so um we're secret hair solutions and in instagram um or the secret hair shop um and having a look on our website and coming to one of our salons that we've got trained. So, you know, you, you'll get our contact details. They're giving us a call and we can kind of steer you in the right direction of, you know, where you're at in your journey. And um, it's so different for everyone. So like one person, it could be food, another person, it could be de-stressing, another person, it could be, you know, um, a product that they need on their head. And 
we'd be able to tailor something like that for you in the salon. Ah, fantastic. And I, I totally agree with you. You know, this sort of care or, you know, hair therapy needs to be tailored to the individual because everyone's mm-hmm. unique and uh, different. So uh, an individualized approach is the best way to ultimately get the best care for that that person. So, uh, and I'll certainly share those contact details in the show notes. So where wherever people are listening to this, uh, they'll yeah. have direct links to your uh, social media and your website. So I just really wanted to uh, thank, um, you know, Shona and uh, Danielle today for, you know, sharing and a lot of their wisdom around how they treat hair holistically and how they really care for their clients and get the best outcomes for their clients because of that holistic individualized approach. So uh, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, for the listeners, um, you know, please, you know, if you like the episode, please like it and share it with others that could benefit anyone that you know that it's ex- experiencing hair loss, anyone that you know that's going through cancer or any condition that's leading to rapid hair loss and, and, and you're seeing your friend really, you know, be, get starting to get really self-conscious. And this is a fantastic episode to share with them because not only they'll get some great information, they'll get direct contact with these fantastic uh, hair therapists and uh, all the hair salons that they've trained up in, in terms of uh, this hair, hair approach. So um, certainly share it with others and stay tuned for more insightful episodes of Me and My Health Up. Thanks. Thanks.